Good evening, everybody. I'm currently out shooting the Crescent Nebula, but that's not really what this video is about. In a few days, a little over a week, I have a chance to get a shot that I've been trying to get for over a year. And I have just a second to get it. And if I don't get it, then I'm gonna miss it. And then it could be months before I get another chance. As you probably guessed with the title, in about a week's time, I have a ISS Transit in front of the moon. Now, these are not that rare, but when you taking all the factors that you want to get a good shot of this, then it becomes not only very difficult, but also a quite rare opportunity. Because not only do you need to have, of course, the ISS transiting as close to a full moon as possible, that already cuts down the number of days that you can get it, the transit, of course, also needs to be within acceptable driving distance because if you are just like 10 kilometers too far north or too far south, the ISS might miss the moon entirely. And if anything goes wrong in the evening, I can't spend an hour like bug fixing as you normally can. When it passed, it passed and it takes just 1.2 seconds. And I think this is why it makes it such a difficult thing to do. Not taking the shot itself is difficult, but all the other things that need to fall in place to get it. Okay, first we have a lot of planning to do. You can see here on the ISS transit finder that I have two potentially good transits because I want to get it as close to a full moon as possible. The full moon is on the 7th, so we have September 7th as the full moon. So we have one of the 6th and one of the 8th. The one of the 8th is a little bit better positioned um, in terms of driving time for me. <clears throat> so that's probably the one I'm going to go for. If we look at it on the map here, here we can see the transit and we can see that we need to basically find a place along this center blue line where we could potentially park our car and get that shot because we could try to go down here maybe into this little suburb here and we can see we're gonna get not quite through the center we're gonna get a total transit duration of 1.15 seconds but you can see here if we aim it right on the line we get a little bit longer so we can go a bit off that's okay but i want to try to find something along this line that could uh, that could work okay so immediately i'm looking at this there's a hospital down here and i'm looking at the parking lot just north of it um i wonder what about this because this one here you can see that the the satellite images here are from 2025 if i go down to street view level um it does look like there's a lot of trees here i can't see those on the on the um on the satellite but these also from 2012 so I think those satellite images, also those street view images is a bit outdated. If we go out here on the side. Yeah, this is probably more, more like it. I'm not too worried about lights. I mean, we're shooting the moon. It's going to be very, very bright. So I'm not really too worried about having too much light pollution in my area, which is nice. But if you're just going to check up here because the line is up here, basically. You can see it. it's just north of that. So we could get up there on the other side of the road that would be ideal but i'm not sure if that's a place there's a few businesses here oh that's just perfect i think this is it guys look at this it's a dead end road and we are very very close to the line right so we're basically going to be here we're going to be a few meters off the line if we go up in that corner there we pretty much have it straight through the center that's perfect and again like location wise we have the highway right here so super easy access just get off of that um that exit here and you're basically there makes it super easy to get there and get back again okay so the moon is gonna be southeast in the sky okay, i'm just checking it here the, the transit installarium of course we're gonna have a miss because i haven't set it to the exact location um but it looks like the transit here is going to happen at 23, 23.15.23-ish. 23, what does it say here? 27. Yeah, so I'm going to, of course, be recording around it. So I have some, some. but that's just looks like that should be right. Should be out in this direction. South, southeast is like out here. I just need to make sure that that tree is not going to be in the way. I think it's going to be higher in the sky than that. And if that's a problem, then I'm just going to, you know, move over here. Something like that just so that oh there's more trees i mean worst case if everything else fails i'm gonna move over here so i have a clear shot in that direction it's just a few meters that should be okay so i think this is gonna be the spot that i'm gonna go for 
Okay, next order of business is to figure out what equipment to bring. So we want to take a shot at the moon. I have a Canon 90D. That might be an option. And then I could put it on my Newtonian, maybe. Let's try to add this as a view. That's pretty good. I have a feeling that will probably be a good contester. I do have another camera. Um, I could go with a Canon R8, which have a wider field of view. Um, it's a full frame. But again, I think I'm actually going to go with the with the 90D because it's a newer camera. And I think that it also can shoot faster because it's going to be the tactics I'm going to be using here. I want to shoot this at 120 frames per second as I want to make a video out of it, as that is my primary medium here. By shooting at 120 and then playing it back at 30 frames per second, which is what my videos are usually at, that means I'm going to get like four times the transit length. So from our transit calculator here, we can see we have uh, about one and a quarter the transit time. And if we multiply that by four, I get a five second transit time in the video as the ISS moves past. Okay, that should be fine. We have a location, we have a time, and we know what equipment to bring. So now it's just a waiting game. And here we are exactly where I didn't plan to be. As you can see, we are at a different parking lot. Maybe that's not so easy to see here at night, but a few days after I did the initial planning for this, um, the line updated. I don't know if they boosted the station or what happened, or if they got better predictions. But point being, um, the line moved, so I had to find another location. But here we are. You can see, maybe you can, hopefully you can see the moon is right there behind us. There is a few clouds. They're all gone now, but when I arrived like 10 minutes ago, there was a few scattered clouds around. I really hope that they are going to stay away because, as I said, we really only have like a second to get this shot and it would suck if there was a cloud in the way. But for now, I'm gonna get my gear assembled, get pull aligned, and um, then we're gonna take it from there and see what happens. And we are halfway through the setup and everything looks like this now. Everything just completely clouded over in a matter of like five minutes. Um, so um, hopefully the clouds are gonna disappear as quickly as they showed up. Otherwise, uh, we're not gonna have a lot of luck, but there is still quite a bit of time before the transit. So uh, fingers crossed. Okay, status update, 45 minutes till transit. We're still in a complete cloud cover. Um, my plan was originally to actually use my normal Astro camera for polar lining. And then once I was polar lined, I was gonna remove that camera and put my other camera on that I brought that's going to actually shoot it because I have a camera that can shoot higher frames per second than this one. But, well, I tried to pull a line it by, by eye beforehand, but as you can see, it's going to be a little difficult. The best I can do right now is just wait and hope. And um, I think if we get as we get closer, if the cloud cover doesn't move, I'm going to switch the cameras anyways, and then just hope my eyeballing pull alignment was good enough. Um, it only really has to track the moon for just the few seconds it takes to shoot the video. Okay, we got 10 minutes till transit. I gave up on the polar alignment, but we got a break in the cloud. I got the camera lined up and it focused now. So now all I have to do is just pray that that gap holds for another 10 minutes. I don't know if this shows up on video here, but we have like a thin sliver between like everything over there is completely clouded out. Everything behind me is completely clouded out. We just have a thin sliver right at the moon. God damn it, we're at the five minute mark and the gap is closing. It moved over there. <sighs> Come on. It looks like just down there's a the horizon, there might be a few holes. Less than a minute to go and the gap has opened up. Everything looks good. Video is running and it should happen anytime now. Banda. 
Og det var bare noget, det var bare noget bitte, mand. Og det siger, bush. The transit should have happened now. I'm just going to run for another few minutes. Um, actually, I'm quite surprised. This has been running for a few minutes now, and without just, you know, I just eyeballed my pole alignment. It's keeping that moon like rock solid there in the middle. So when you're doing things at a short time scale, <laughs> pole alignment, you can just eyeball. I don't even have to use accurate anything at all, apparently. I just reviewed the footage and I got it. I can see it on the like tiny screen on my camera. And I just want to point out that the sky five minutes after transit is completely clear. Like there's a few clouds above me, but now it's just clear skies all around, which is of course typical. Now it would be a great time to actually do this, but I got it and I can't wait to get home and review this on a proper size screen. Okay, here we have the video from last night. And let me see. So as I said, I recorded the whole thing as a high speed video. Oh, I can see the clouds moving in here. Um, at 120 frames per second and playing it back at 30 frames per second so that means this is slowed down by a factor of four i tried to start the video two minutes beforehand so that means that the transit should happen around eight minutes i was a bit late like a few seconds late on pressing the start button on the camera that means the transit is probably like seven minutes something like that. let's try to just watch it from seven minutes and see Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that. <laughs> there it is. Hold on. I need to test something here because I want to see that looks pretty close to the center. But I actually want to test how close did I get to the center of the moon here. So let me just try to see if we can test that somehow. So this is my collimation tool, but we'd like to use it for this purpose here. Um, right now, I just have the video playing here in the background. Um, but if we turn on the rings and just, you know, oh, kind of moving the moon around a bit. Let's just scrub through this, see if we can find. I know now that it was around seven minutes and 40 something and paused it right there when it looks like it's close to the center. And now we can try to just see we can, we can match, match this up to, to where the moon is. It's definitely not, I think it's the circle is a bit too small right now. I think that circle, is matching the moon pretty well around there and look at that look oh there's not centered but look how close it is if you remove it you can see it it is right there that little speck there is the space space station look how close this is pretty much perfect in terms of location we were like bang on center i'm gonna show you a montage of this in just a second but this was a fun project. Um, I mean, it's so different from what we usually do, where every shot takes like 10, 20, 30 hours of data collection. And now we're down to this where you have like a second to uh, to, to get your shot. And, and what I really like about this uh, process here was that you could sit and plan carefully everything in advance and then go and execute your plan and you come home with this beautiful video that showed up exactly as i hoped it would but without further ado please enjoy the montage Start up here at the top, we will of course see the saddle. The saddle itself is full metal. We can see it has a dual saddle, so it can take both the narrow. You can't just go and say, oh, that brand and that brand and that brand is good. Because even some of the brands that make some of the best telescopes on the market, you 